Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome again to our Monday 15 minutes podcast. Remember, we started this series of teaching last week, Monday, on the subject how to honor your spouse. Now, it's becoming very serious. Hallelujah. So, if you have not been following me since last week, please go back to Monday podcast so that you can watch the three episodes that you'll be able to follow us in today's episode. Okay. The title is How to Honor Your Spouse. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Press subscription. Bell comes up. Press on the bell. And then you are a subscriber. Now, what do you have to gain? Everything. What do you have to lose? Nothing. So that after your busy schedule, then YouTube can send you, YouTube will have sent you, what do you call a, a notification. And then you can always follow us up on our YouTube, on our uh, podcast on our 15 minutes podcast um last week we went, we took our text from first peter 3 7 hallelujah and uh, we came to the second way to honor your spouse i showed us the life of micah how micah the second way to honor your wife or to honor your spouse rather is by your lips by your lips we saw how micah dishonor david by her lips i've explained it on friday i won't go back to it again and then how that affected her. She was the only woman in the Bible that the Bible said was buried and never had a baby. You won't see another one again. Okay. Now we saw also that Jesus Christ went to his hometown. They dishonored Jesus Christ. They dishonored Jesus Christ with their lips. They say this is not the carpenter. That is every time they see Jesus. In fact, they mentioned all the names of the people in his family. But they didn't call Jesus by name. They, they told him that he's just an ordinary carpenter. And do you know what? The carpenter cannot heal you. Carpenter cannot deliver you. So so jesus christ could not heal them because he was not a healer to them neither was he a savior to them so all the added of god in is the kitchen cabinet that jesus fixed for them some other time ago okay so today we're going to be continue uh on sarah sarah did not dishonor abraham calling him abraham but honored him with her lips calling him lord in our first peter 35 to 6 for after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God and done themselves, being in subjection, be in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as you do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Wonderful. Contrary to Micah, Micah was a princess who despised her husband's family background. Even when God had turned things around for David, according to David in 2 Samuel 6, 21 to 23. Now, what I'm saying is this. Now, I'm beginning to compare Sarah and Micah. Sarah was barren. Micah was barren. But do you know what? The difference between Sarah and Micah is that Sarah honored her husband and called him Lord. But, but Micah insulted her husband and dishonored him and never saw him as a king. Never saw him as a, as a husband. And she got exactly, exactly that. And eventually, Sarah had Isaac because Sarah honored Abraham by calling him Lord. Okay, so my so so Micah was a princess who despised her husband's family background, even when God had turned things around for David, according to David in 2 Samuel 6 21 to 23. And David said unto Micah, It was before the Lord which chose me before thy father and before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord, and I will yet be more vile than those, and will be based. In my own sight, and of the maid servants which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I be hard in honor. Therefore, Micah, the daughter of Saul, had no child unto the day of her death. Did you see that? God has changed things around for, for your husband. Why do you still treat him less? Protect your spouse from killer words. Like, I will divorce you. Any word you don't want a spouse to remember for the rest of their lives cannot be used in your marriage. Words are spirits, like Jesus said in John 6 63. It is the spirit that quickened, the flesh profited nothing. The word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Words are containers, they can carry war or peace. Oh, yes, war starts with words, war finishes with, with words. So, the war that is going on in your family now can be traced to your words. Oh, yes either on your husband's side or on the wife's side listen to me when two countries are fighting wars they started with wars 
before it ends into war. So, wars are containers. They can carry war or peace. Protect your spouse from wars. Use only words that will lift your spouse up in your marriage. The war or peace in your marriage are carried by words used in your marriage. Did you see that? So, when people don't mind the words they use, then they wonder why there is war in their marriage. No, your war, the war in your marriage can be traced to the dishonors in your lips. So, save your spouse from killer words. There are some words you can't use in your marriage. Any word you don't want your spouse to remember, don't use them in your marriage. Michael dishonored David because of his background. The same way Jesus was dishonored by his countrymen and women too, calling him a carpenter in that uh, Mark 6, 1-5. And he went out from tents and came into his own country. And the disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence have this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hand? So they know. Is not this the carpenter? Oh my God. The carpenter. Not the Messiah. Not the healer. They just describe him as a healer. In, in verse 2. And now they are referring to, referring to him as a carpenter. The son of Mary, the son of James, and, uh, and, and uh, sorry, the son of Mary, the brother of James, and Joseph, and of Judah, and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us. And they were offended at him. Of course, they will. They will. So stop. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor. Did you see that? But his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. Did you see that? A prophet is not without honor. In other words, Jesus was telling them that you people dishonored me with your lips by calling me capital. What kind of name do you call your spouse? When there's a quarrel and misunderstanding in the family, how do you call them? Do you talk to them and say, I, 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 it's me that made a mistake. I shouldn't have married the son of a farmer. Wow, you just killed that marriage. You just killed that marriage. Honor your spouse with your lips. They call Jesus carpenter. And Jesus told them, Jesus said, a prophet is not without honor. In other words, Jesus was telling them, I'm a prophet. I'm a prophet. But you both dishonor me. Instead of them seeing a prophet, they were seeing a carpenter. <laughs> Stop dishonoring your spouse. While outside of us singing their praises. <laughs> Jesus was dishonored at home. But his praise was sung everywhere else, like Capernaum, according to him in Luke 4 23. Look at this. And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me, this proverb, Physician, hear thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. Did you see that? They sang the praises of Jesus in Capernaum. But in Jesus' hometown, they dishonored him with his lips, with their lips. Stop dishonoring your spouse while outsiders are singing their praises. You stop dishonoring your spouse at home. As a man, people welcome your wife with red carpet, but at home, you welcome her with black carpet. No, oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. You will destroy the home. You will destroy the marriage. Marriages are weak or marriages are broken because of dishonor. Dishonor to a spouse or dishonor to a principle that God ordained in the marriage. And marriages work because of honor. Honor to a spouse or honor to a principle that God placed in position. So David's praise was sung by outsiders, but not by Micah, his wife, in that second Samuel 6 22. And I will get and I will yet be more vile than this, than those, and will be based in my own sight. And and of the many servants which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I be hard in honor. In other words, David was telling Micah. You are dishonoring me, right? But do you know what? These servants you are speaking, that they are seeing my nakedness. Do you know what? They honor me. They honor me. Even though they saw my nakedness, but they don't talk about my nakedness. But you believe that because you are my wife, you can open your mouth and dishonor me. That's what David is saying. That's what David is saying. Look at the way NIV puts it. NIV says, I will become even more undignified than this. Oh, yes. You know why? Because Micah pushed David to use that language. I will become even more undignified than this. And I will be humiliated in my own eyes. But by these slave girls you spoke of. Did you see that? You are a princess. They are slave. Hear what they said. He said, but by these slave girls you spoke of, I will be held in honor. The slaves held David in honor. 
But do you know what? His wife, because he's a princess, held David in dishonor. That's why she couldn't produce. That's why she couldn't produce a child. That's why she couldn't produce a child. So the unproductivity in your life as a husband or as a wife, you know the Bible said it. If you dishonor your wife, your prayers will be answered. Your prayers will not be answered. The unproductivity in your family can be traced to dishonor. Dishonor to your wife or dishonor to your husband or dishonor to the principle that God put in place in marriage. So the, 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 the unproductivity in your family is not done to it's not caused by the devil, it's caused by dishonor in your home. By dishonor in your home. Now let me let me read how the NLT put that second Samuel 6 22 to 23. Yes, and I'm willing to look even more foolish than this. So meaning that Micah see the husband undignified, according to NIV. That's why David used that language. And and a, a, a and a NIT use foolish thing. In other words, David is saying that you see me as a foolish man, isn't it? Yes, and I am willing to look even more foolish than this even to be humiliated in my own eyes but those servant girls you mentioned will indeed think i am distinguished distinguished so you see so 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 david can read into their thoughts so please stop dishonoring your spouse at home while people are singing their praises on the street while people are singing their praises of the street. if outsiders are first to praise your spouse before you do and if you do at all expect to have a weak marriage or none at all protect your marriage with your lips if you have a spouse that honors you with her lips protect her honor your spouse with your lips the same way sarah did honor abraham calling him lord in that first peter 3 5 to 6 for after this manner in the old time the holy women also who trusted in god and done themselves being in subjection unto their own husband even as sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughter ye are as long as you do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Did you see that? So watch the way people honor your husband or your wife. Do you know what? At home, honor them the same way. In fact, if, if not better, if not, listen to me, you have a weak family. You have a whole world. You will have a family that becomes unproductive. Do you know what? I've run out of time. But I'll see you in our Wednesday 15 minutes podcast where we'll be going into the third way that you can honor your spouse. For me, I want to tell you that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'll see you in our Wednesday 15 minutes podcast.